Good morning all. Today we will discuss about the parallel RLC circuits. Now we will draw the phasor diagram for parallel RLC circuit. So, before going to the three element parallel circuit, it is better to understand the two element circuit and let us draw the phasor diagram of the parallel circuit containing two elements. So, let us consider first a two element RL parallel circuit that is excited by one supply called Vs. As the voltage is same for all the elements, we will take voltage phasor as the reference. So, we will take this V and this V will be Vr equal to Vl. Now, for one resistive circuit, we know that the current through register and the voltage across register are in the same phase. So, we will draw IR in the same direction with the VR or VL or V. And for the inductor, so here we will draw one current that is IL and the current phasor which is indicating the total current or resulted current will be obtained in this direction and that will be denoted by IS or IT. So, now let us consider another circuit, another parallel circuit which contains one resistor and one capacitor in parallel. Now, we will again we will draw the voltage reference. So, this will be V. So, now this V will be Vr equal to Vc and for the resistive circuit as current and voltage are always remain in same phase. So, we will draw the Ir which will be in same direction with Vr and for the Vc as the current leads. So, for the capacitive circuit as the current leads, so definitely the Ic will be considered to be the leading current. For the resultant current, we will be denoting this phasor as Is or It. So, I think the phasor diagram two element parallel circuit is clear to you. Now, if we have this parallel RLC circuit, we understood that current produced by Vs will be divided in three different branches. The current IT is equal to IR plus IL plus IC. Now, what about the voltages across the element? So, this is the voltage across register, VL is the voltage across inductor and VC will be the voltage across capacitor. Now, here you can see from the circuit that V that is the voltage across all these elements Vr equal to Vl equal to Vc. But currents may be same or may not be same and it depends on the specific parameters as we have already mentioned. So, now if we go for the phasor diagram of the parallel RLC circuit, we need to follow the rule for reference phasor. 
So in the series analysis circuit, the reference phasor was the parameter which was common for all the elements. So in this parallel circuit also, we will take the reference phasor for the parameter which is common for all the elements. As we see the voltage across the elements are same, so we will take this parameter as the reference phasor. Now if we do not take this V as reference then also it is possible to draw the phasor diagram, but if we take that it will be little bit easier. Now and we will draw a phasor as the reference. So we can tell that this is equal to V which is nothing but Vr equal to Vl equal to Vc. Now we need to draw the phasors for the currents. Now as we know the current through the register and the voltage drop across the register always remain in the same phase. So, we can easily draw the current phasure. So, we are considering in this time this V is nothing but Vr because V equal to Vr equal to Vl equal to Vc. So, definitely we can consider this phasure as Vr and IR will be in the same phase. Now we want to draw the phasor for the inductor current. Now we need to remember that for an pure inductor current passing through the inductor lags behind the voltage dropped across the inductor by an angle 90 degree. So for drawing the current phasor for inductor that is IL, we need to take this phasor that is voltage phasor as VL and accordingly we need to draw the current phasor for the inductor. So what we have to do? We have to draw the current phasor which will be 90 degree apart from the voltage vector or voltage phasor and that should be in the clockwise direction as we have learned already. So in the clockwise direction if we get some phasor that will be in the lagging condition. So as the current IL lags behind the voltage that phasor will be at a 90 degree phase displacement in the clockwise direction. Now for the current through the capacitor we have to draw in the clockwise direction. Now as we know the current through the capacitor leads over the voltage dropped across the capacitor. So, we can consider this phasor same voltage phasor as Vc and we can draw one phasor as shown here at an angle pi by 2 which will be obtained by rotating pi by 2 in anticlockwise direction. So here we got the current phasor for capacitor, current phasor for inductor and current phasor for register. Now we can see here the currents through the capacitor and through inductor are opposite to each other and definitely we will get the resultant current after subtracting the current IC from IL. So, this will be our current IL minus IC and we will get one resultant current. So, which will be 
giving us the total current or resultant current as I T. And we know that the angle between the voltage vector and the current is the phase angle. So, this phi is the phase angle between the total current and the voltage across all the elements and here the cos phi will be the power factor. So, this will be the power factor. Now, let us see if we have a circuit where the current through the capacitor is found more. So, let us consider that current through capacitor is I C, current through the inductor is I L, current through the resistor as I R and total current is I T. And voltage for capacitor, it will be V C for inductor, it will be V L and for resistor it will be V R and as the rule or principle of parallel connection V equal to V R equal to V L equal to V C. Now, we will again take the phasor of the voltage as different phasor. So, this will be V equal to V R equal to V L equal to V C and for the register we know that the voltage drop across resistance will be V R and that will have zero phase displacement from its current through it. So, I R will be in the same phase with V equal to V R. Now, as you know for the inductive circuit the current lags behind the voltage. So, here again we will draw the current phasor for the inductor that is I L at an angle pi by 2 drawn in clockwise direction. And for the capacitor as the current leads over the voltage. So, we need to draw a phasor which will be found at an angle pi by 2 but in anti clockwise direction. So, this will be our IC and here we have assumed that IC will be more than IL. So, definitely we will get one current value which will be obtained as I C minus I L as I C is greater than I L. So, this phasor will be say obtained as the result of the subtraction and the resultant will be the I T. So, this will be total current and the phase angle between the voltage and the total current will be phi again and the power factor will be cos phi. So, here we have to note that the phasor that is current is in a leading condition because we consider the circuit as a capacitance value in such a way that I L is less than I C or I C is greater than I L. So, I C is greater than I L. So, capacitor current is dominating and as the capacitor current is dominating and as we know that for capacitive circuit current leads here also we found that current is, is found in the leading condition and that leading angle is phi and here we will see that the voltage is lagging behind the current or current is total current is leading over the voltage. So, I think the phasor diagram for the parallel RLC circuit is clear to you now.